Houdini 20 gives us a new setting that allows us to quickly and easily create sticky collisions between RBD objects. So let's take a look at how we can go about setting this up. So this project file will be available on Patreon. If you wanna grab it, you can grab it on there. But let's go ahead and set this up again. So I'm gonna drop down a SOP create. We are in Solaris, so I'm gonna build everything in there just so it's easy to uh, set up Karma if you want to move forward through that. So we will drop down a, uh, let's do a sphere to start out with actually. So we need to actually create some points that will allow us to scatter some objects onto so that we can have something for our object to stick to. So let's just set this to a polygon, crank up the frequency, and then we'll crank up the size. And we'll move this just up a little bit. And then we can do a points from volume. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the point separation, the jitter scale and the jitter seed. And then let's go ahead and make a pig head and do a copy to points. And we'll set the pig head onto those points. So let's take our pig head here and let's just take away the shader and scale this down a little bit. And now we have some objects for our, our object to stick to. Uh, we've got some that are intersecting, so let's maybe up the jitter scale and maybe the point separation. Something like that should be good. We don't need a ton of objects, just a few. And then let's create our object for the objects to stick to. So let's just make a sphere. Obviously you can set this to whatever you want. Let's go ahead and template our copy to points here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to a polygon as well and just crank up the frequency again. And then this time I'm going to move this up in the Y by 0.5 just so it's sitting on our ground plane. And I'm also going to move it over in the positive Z direction. So maybe something like six should work. And then now we need to set up our RBD. So we'll do RBD configure. So we'll need two of these, one for our pig head and one for our sphere. In our sphere, this is where we're actually going to set up the sticky collision. So we go to the top, we scroll down to this sticky collision settings. We have a few different options in here. So let's go ahead and turn on the first one, which is min sticky collision impulse. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the help docs here. So there's four different settings. The first one, like I said, is this min sticky collision impulse. This is basically my understanding is how strong of an impact this needs to um, make it stick to other objects. If you set it to zero, it's going to stick to everything, I believe. And then uh, the values of that will determine how strong of an impact it needs. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's how that works. And then we have max sticky collision objects. So this is the maximum number of objects that it can stick to. And then max sticky collision points. So every time it hits an object and that it can stick to, it's going to create a constraint or an anchor point as this says. And that is how you can limit the maximum number of anchor points that it will have uh, in the simulation. You also make it ignore objects if you like, that's where the sticky collision ignore comes in. Let's go ahead and just turn on the first collision or the first uh, sticky collision option and set that to zero so that it sticks to everything. And that is all we need to do for these two, except for the name attribute here. Let me just set this to something else just to make sure that it works uh, with the other objects in the bullet solver is if you have this set to piece uh, as well as this RBD configure set to piece, it's going to set two objects to piece zero and then it's not gonna wanna work. So we also need to give this object some velocity here. So let's do an attribute adjust vector. We'll wire that into the first input here. And let's enable this pre-process and overwrite the initial value. I'm just going to set this to like negative five for now in the Z direction, because we move this over in the positive Z by a value of like six or something like that. So that should give it some velocity moving in the opposite direction to impact these, these pickheads. 
So let's drop down a merge and we can wire in our objects here. And then we also need our bullet solver. So let's just drop that in. And we can wire these into the first and the third inputs. And then let's bring over our constraints from that object right there. And we should be all set. So we'll just reset our simulation. Let's go to our collisions. Let's go to the ground type and set our ground plane. And let's go back to frame zero actually. And now if we press play, we have that object that's moving and it impacts our pig head. So it's actually not got enough velocity for what I want. So let's just up this to maybe like negative eight and then we can reset this. But you saw that it did stick to that pig head. So it is working. So let's press play. And maybe we need to even up this maybe a little bit more, maybe to negative, I don't know, 17. Oops, and let's go ahead and reset, press play. And now we get it bouncing into some pig heads. Let's actually just increase the, the weight of this object. So if we come in here, we can select user density and maybe we'll set this to like 10,000 and see what that does for our simulation. Press play. And now they should kind of move through the pig heads a little bit more. And you can see that it is, and it is collecting some pig heads along the way. So that is kind of the basics of how to set this up. If you want to go back in here, we can enable this max sticky collision. So we can set this to maybe one and we can reset, press play. And now it should only select, it only um, sticks to one object and you see it kind of bounce some others out of the way there. So you can make it kind of dial in your simulation based off of whatever parameters that you set. So mess around with all that stuff and you can get some, some cool things going. Uh, really cool to see this. This does work on crowds as well. So if you saw that in the, uh, the Houdini 20 like presentations, uh, it does work on crowds. So you can run that on crowds as well and get some really cool stuff there. I'm not going to show that in this video because it's kind of out of the scope of this, but this is how you go about setting up the sticky collisions inside Houdini 20. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel. So if you wanna learn more about Houdini, then make sure to check those out. I also have, like I said, a Patreon in the start of the video. You can grab this project file there. I won't include just this little stuff that we set up here. I'll include the demo animation uh, file that we set up or that I set up for this video. And you can take a look at how I went through everything, but it's essentially the same thing that we did here. And it's also free to follow on Patreon. So if you haven't done that and you have a Patreon, I would recommend following on there just so you don't miss anything. I have the ability to, uh, to put up some free stuff here and there. So I'm going to start doing that here in the future. So make sure that you follow on Patreon. Even if you don't subscribe on there, then that's fine. Just make sure you follow that way. You can grab some of the free stuff as I drop that along. Anyways, like I said, check out the other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about Houdini. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.